Hey everyone and welcome to the latest video where I'll be looking at the tvOS beta versions so this I believe is tvOS beta 4 originally when I actually started putting out these videos I believe I may have actually installed um, beta 2 to start with um, or beta 1 may have been completely skipped for the tvOS's um, but basically if we come in and we take a look at the build number um, if I just pull up the pointer, you'll be able to see tvOS version and it's 14.0 and then it's 18J5354D. So that's the bill number for this particular version. Um, from what I've read online and what most people are putting out there, um, iOS 14 beta 4 has been really unstable for me personally. Um, some of you will know from my channel that um, I've been testing it on the iPhone 6S Plus. Uh, basically, as soon as I installed it, whilst it does feel a little bit snappier and possibly a little bit quicker, um, what it is doing is it's crashing a lot more. So I had random reboots. So the first night I actually installed it, I installed it late at night. And what I did was I left it on charge. And basically when I went to take it off charge, it just had a random reboot. It then also crashed with basic apps like the YouTube app, the YouTube Studio app, and other basic apps that have been working perfectly fine. And a lot of other users have also reported issues with iOS 14 beta 4 as well. Um, so on the tvOS side, obviously I was a little bit skeptical as to whether I should actually do this particular update or not because it's pretty much going to be based about ar around the same sort of thing. However, I thought, seeing as this is a test device, and as as I've said with my reasoning in the past, I can I can make do on this particular TV without having the Apple TV actually in use. So essentially, everything that I can do on the Apple TV, I can do straight through the TV as well through uh, LG's WebOS. So if I just pull up, as you can see, I've got all my major four, I've got my IPTV, everything that I would need to do. I can do straight through the TV anyway. So I thought this would be a good test for everybody out there. So first things first, and as most of you guys know, HomeKit is the biggest thing. That's why I actually did the update in the first place. So let's take a look at that. So if you hold the TV button now, um, you're not really gonna be able to see that in video, but if you hold the TV button, it pulls up the, what is effectively the control center on tvOS. If you then come down to the home icon, unfortunately, we still only have scenes rather than actual um, icons. So it doesn't actually give me access to any, any of the physical buttons, switches, light switches, LEDs, anything like that. So it's still only giving scenes. However, one thing that I didn't notice straight away was that the cameras update a lot faster. So if I switch that now, bear in mind these first two are actually battery powered. So it needs maybe a second or two to actually become live in the first place. So as you can see, that one's live. If I switch to the next one, that's very snappy. And this third one is actually just a test camera that I've got set up. This is a Reolink C2 Pro. This one is running through Homebridge. Um, I've got videos coming up on that on my channel. Um, you're probably not gonna see them for a while, but if I switch back and then I switch back to the Reolink again, as you can see, it's pretty much instant. Um, the one thing I have noticed, it doesn't seem to display any any time or anything, any branding on, on this particular image. So if I view this through, so basically this is what, what I mean. So in the top right, you can see the date and time and everything. And the real link is actually supposed to be showing that as well. I can't remember, I think this one actually shows it a little uh, branding in the top right and some more somewhere else. But for some reason, um, it doesn't actually pull that through on the on the rear link when I'm actually doing it through the TV. So that's initial thoughts, obviously, with regards to the HomeKit side, it does feel a lot snappier. I've not actually tested any of the scenes because most of these scenes do multiple things, as I've mentioned in the past. So, but the animations do appear a little bit quicker. So the wait time between when I would click off and it'd go back to that icon and then similarly from this icon back to the home screen, it just feels a lot more snappy. That feels like there's no drop frames and it's back up to the kind of standard that you would expect with Apple. If I engage the screensaver, uh, yeah, the screensavers, that engages a lot faster. Before what used to happen was when the screensaver would actually kick in, there'd be maybe a two or three second black screen pause between when it changed from your home screen to your screensaver and similarly when you click off it it wouldn't be this smooth smooth change um, between the screensaver and the home screen it would literally just kind of flash up now let's test it with some content so if I come in 
the first thing I'll do is I'll just kill the sound and I'll play Joker Blu-ray and I'll, I'll blur this on screen so I don't get no content strikes or anything but basically in this what I want to show is so it's switched to HDR in the top right that switch time was a lot faster than it would normally do so pre on the previous builds what it's been doing is but whenever it's had to switch uh, sources um, sorry uh, display type so when it's switched from SDR to HDR or to Dolby Vision um, there's been a two or three second pause between that what one other thing is if I just come out of that and go back to the home screen. So I left that playing and I've just come straight out. Now that is a lot faster um, because essentially what it's done is it's switched from HDR 10 back to SDR effectively. And if I just click back onto that, it's now gonna go back in and it's gonna start playing and it's switched to HDR and because it was paused, obviously it didn't kick in straight away, but there, there we go, so it's, it's playing again. So in terms of speed, it looks like it's getting back up to the kind of levels um, I was used to from iOS 13 effectively. Um, that's obviously with a built-in app. Yeah, see, uh, what I did was I came out of that and then I hit the home button at the same time. And on iOS 14 betas one through till whatever they were, the previous ones, it would basically glitch out and you'd be on a no input screen on the TV. Uh, so far, I've not actually seen any no input screens. So next thing what I'll do is I'll just come into Netflix and same thing again, I'm just gonna uh, blank out all the content because it's not worth getting a, a content strike over, over this. But let me find something that is Dolby Vision. Right, so this particular, so Cursed is showing is Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. And what I'll do is I'll just hit play just looking for Dolby Atmos at the bottom there so it switched to Dolby Vision without needing to go into any particular black screen and Dolby Atmos has kicked in at the bottom as well so everything looks to be working fine and then what I'll do is I'll just come straight out of that and go to the home screen and that's basically as fast as it was on iOS 13 so the reason it takes that few, maybe one to two seconds is because it's actually switching from Dolby Vision mode back to um, SDR, which is what I run the Apple TV in most of the time. So if I come across to, okay, that's a bit weird. Yep, there we go. So come across to, yeah, there you go. So you can see it's 4K SDR. Um, I think it's normally 60 FPS that I run it at. But effectively the time that is switching between Dolby Vision HDR and SDR that's reduced quite quite a bit it's probably about half as long uh, compared to what it was doing previously and the other thing I've noticed is it's no longer switching to a no input while it's actually doing that so anybody who's familiar with the LG TVs what happens is whenever it switches those imports if it's too long your TV will actually detect no import source and it'll, it'll bring up a no import um, display effectively and that was happening quite regularly on the previous beta versions. On this particular beta version, it's it looks like basically that that's been rectified, and the, the time for which it's it takes to actually switch over is reduced quite a bit. So so far so good in terms of this particular beta build. Um, everything that I've tested so far seems to be working. I mean, even in the previous builds, most of the apps were still working perfectly fine. They did have a few glitches. Netflix was one of them, where um, what you had to do was when you if say for example you were playing something on Netflix if you then went back into it in fact this would be a good test because I was actually playing something let's go back in and there you go you see it's carried straight on and what was happening previously was if you were say for example you played a TV show or a movie and the next day you came back into do, uh, Netflix what would happen is it'd kick up an error before you could actually play something so I've stopped that now. What happens if I actually hit play and try and restart that? By now it would have kicked up the error. So that tells me straight away. And there you go, see Dolby Atmos at the bottom, Dolby Vision in the top right. So everything is working back how it should be. Um, so yeah, that was the only app that I was actually having an issue with. All the other ones worked perfectly fine. Prime we, we've used, Disney Plus we've used, and I, th I think I tested a few on Apple TV Plus as well. Um, so all of those major four ones were working. So now YouTube itself. So let's come in and, all right, so if I take a look at this particular video, 
and if we come down to picture options and there you go still only giving us 1080p no 4k option despite me knowing for a fact that this video was actually filmed in 4k so unfortunately that's still not been fixed but everything else appears to be working as it should be so no 4k youtube just yet but everything else appears to be working just as it as it should be just check on the I don't really use many other apps in terms of um, BBC iPlayer or anything like that, so I can't really verify with any of those, but everything that I've tested it on so far, um, it appears to be working perfectly fine. So, um, so far so good with this particular beta version. As I've said to other people that have asked me in the comments though, I wouldn't recommend this for your personal device. Um, people have reported, especially on the latest beta, um, on some Reddit posts that basically they were getting an issue with um, basically that no input. Um, I personally haven't experienced that. Um, on the earlier builds, I experienced it a little bit, but not the way in which they describe it. So the way that they actually describe it is in such a way that they simply can't get it to work. So what, what was happening with me was, um, Netflix was the only one that would give me this issue. And what would happen is, um, if you used it and you went back in at a later date, so that the Apple TV must have been switched off and back on for this to actually apply. And then what would happen is when you went in, it'd give you an error message. All you had to do was either close the Netflix app. Um, first few times I did actually restart the whole Apple TV thinking that that would actually do it, but that didn't really make any difference. Um, but I didn't have uh, any issues with regards to no input uh, displaying on the TVs which that's what other people are reporting where um, the no import, the only time I actually got that was when it was switching between modes and it was just a lot slower than it normally was. But that, as I say, is, it looks like it's been fixed. So, so far so good. I've had a lot of questions about the, the HomeKit cameras. As I say, I have got videos coming up on these, but as I say, the, the videos on all of these, these cameras are coming. These are the main reason why I actually upgraded in the first place just so then if we're getting food deliveries or something at night, you can basically just pull this up and you can actually have this running on the side whilst your main content is actually still playing. If you do actually click into it, that then disables or pauses whatever you're playing because obviously you don't want to miss it, um, but you can actually have it in this kind of minimized screen. So then you, obviously you can see if there's a, a delivery or something outside and it gives you a chance to obviously pause, pause your content and obviously go get get your delivery but um other than that so far so good um obviously stay tuned and i'll whenever these kind of updates come around if there's anything meaningful i'll make a video this time obviously the speed improvement is what actually prompted me to actually make this video because previously um it wasn't this snappy in terms of how quickly it's actually switching between uh, standby and screensaver um between SDR and HDR and Dolby Vision. So that's all really good. Dolby Atmos performance has been fine. No issues with regards to that. Some people have also reported they've had issues playing back Dolby Atmos content. Um, I've personally not experienced that. We've been watching movies on this every night so, and basically they've all played back perfectly well. I've, I've deliberately actually used the Apple TV whilst watching the movies just to make sure um, that I'm actually getting some usage out there and it isn't just um, with minimal minimal usage and it's just not like a five minute kind of play about and then you leave it to it. I've, I've tested these as much as I can. Literally the only thing that we haven't done through the Apple TV was IPTV, which to be fair in the past week and a half, I've not really used much and obviously gaming, which my son does on the PS4. But other than that, um, this particular beta version for me personally has been really stable. I still wouldn't recommend it on your main device because you cannot downgrade. For anybody who's already taken the jump and already updated to one of the beta versions, um, from, from my use anyway, I can, I can tell you that obviously, yeah, you can go, go ahead and update to the latest version because it is actually an improvement.